Hello everyone, Oyster Mushroom Expert here. And we continue to talk about the yield of oyster mushrooms. What determines the yield of oyster mushrooms? In previous videos, I talked about the dependence of yield on the substrate and on, figuratively speaking, what is done with it. That is, how the components of plant raw materials are selected and how they are processed, what weight the blocks are made and how many perforations are made in the block. Link to these videos in the first comment. Today we will talk about how productivity depends on the conditions in which the substrate grows. During the incubation period, for good mycelial growth, a temperature of 21 or 22 degrees Celsius is needed. If the temperature is lower, the mycelium will grow slowly and primordia will appear not on days 15 to 17, but on days 24 or even 26. This does not mean that yields will necessarily be low. But, more often than not, this is exactly what happens. Mycelium spends a lot of energy growing at low temperatures and its productivity decreases. The next important factor is the humidity in the incubation room. When the humidity is below 50%, the substrate in the perforation dries out and the mycelium does not grow there. Then you move this bag into a humid growing room. The slit becomes wet and the mycelium forms primordia at some distance from the slit. In this case, most often not all primordia grow into full-fledged mushrooms. Some of them die because they suffocate under the film, another part dies because they spend all their strength trying to grow to the hole. The stem becomes thin, the cap develops with defects, and you lose part of the harvest. I know that some mushroom growers do not raise the humidity higher than 50% because they are afraid that green trichoderma mold or some types of black or gray mold will begin to develop in the slots. Especially if the mushroom grower has previous bitter experience in this matter. However, you must understand that mold grows on the mycelium in the slot because it is present in your premises. That is, your room is contaminated with a large number of spores of this mold. Yes, these spores do not germinate if the humidity is low, but the substrate dries out and the yield decreases. You need to do two things. The first thing is to install proper ventilation in the room. With good air exchange, mold does not grow, even if the humidity is high. And second, you need to get rid of mold and spray the room with fungicides. You can call specially trained workers who will ozonate the room. And one more thing, you need to know that sulfur smoke treatments will not help in this case. Sulfur has no effect on dormant mold spores. It destroys only hyphae, that is, growing mold that is visible to the naked eye. Now let's talk about the growing stage. Excess carbon dioxide in the growing room can reduce your harvest due to the fact that no one will buy such mushrooms from you. If your mushrooms are suffering from high carbon dioxide levels but look like this, you probably won't lose anything. In this case, I don't see any point in worrying about carbon dioxide levels being higher than normal. The standards are stated in the passport of each strain and, in general, they are very optimistic about the mushroom grower's ability to heat or cool the air. However, we often sacrifice norms for the sake of common sense. Which tells us. If we can sell such mushrooms at a good price, why should we spend money on heating or cooling fresh air? But if they look like this, you won't be able to sell them. And the more such mushrooms, the less your profit. The overall yield, taking into account the oyster mushrooms that you threw in the trash, will be high. However, this yield will not please you. If primordia begin to grow when the level of carbon dioxide is too high, they are usually always unsightly in shape. If there was good air exchange during growth, then the clusters that began to develop first will grow beautiful. Then, too many mushrooms growing at the same time release too much carbon dioxide. Therefore, the following clusters stretch the leg. The yield also depends on how many primordia survive and turn into beautiful mushrooms. It's especially sad when a large, beautiful bunch begins to grow, and then all the mushrooms in it die. This depends on several reasons, most notably the microclimate in your grow room. If condensation falls on the primordia, they turn yellow and rot. 
Primordia can die for many reasons. That's all for today. I wish you all a good day and good harvests.